Pick one, folks. You can only pick one, the brush hog, the flail mower, or the finish mower. I did a poll with those three options not that long ago in anticipation of this video, all right? So 1,300 votes, 55% selected flail mower. 17% said finish mower, 28% said rotary cutter. Now, lots of times I like to just give information and let you make your own decision. I'm gonna do some of that today, but I'm also going to try to convince you that the flail mower is the best of the three options. All right, so let's first get our baseline established, all right? So we're using a 25 horsepower tractor here for reference. All three of these tools could be specifically used on this tractor, the Summit TX25. You could also put in a John Deere 1025R, a Kubota BX23S, something similar in there in the subcompact range or the very small compact, uh, like a John Deere 2025R would fit the bill too. I think it's probably most important to start with pricing, all right? That's gonna be ruling most of our worlds. And uh, you gotta be budget conscious. Now, the flail mower is gonna be the most expensive of these tools, all right? That's just kind of the way it goes. But I'm making a case, bear in mind, that this flail mower can replace a brush hog and a finish mower. So you can do both jobs, the job of finish mowing and brush hogging with one tool, potentially saving you money in the long run. Not far underneath that price point though is gonna be a finish mower, but then substantially cheaper than that will be a brush hog, all right? Next thing I think you can visually notice here, you're gonna have different sizes, all right? And on our brush hog, it's gonna be 48 inches wide, four foot wide. Our flail mower, 62 inches wide, or a hair over five foot. Same thing over here on the finish mower, again, a 60 inch or a five foot finish mower too. So you can see the two red attachments are gonna be able to run a little bit wider, actually a little bit, 25% wider than you can with a brush hog. Couple reasons for that, we've gone into depth in other videos too, but brush hogs are a longer uh, piece of equipment, okay? And so when it's longer, it's sticking out further away from the three point, meaning the three point can only lift so much weight and the further back it is the less weight it can lift so if your weight is closer up here like a flail mower or even the finish mower you can lift more versus when that center of mass on a brush hog is pushed out another couple of feet it's going to be able to lift less weight so if you put a 60 inch brush hog on here a lot of these smaller tractors can't lift it up so that's part of the reason you're paying less is because it's for a smaller attachment compared to the bigger ones with these two so you kind of got to put a red x almost against the brush hog for that because it's smaller you're not gonna be doing things as quickly with it um, as you are with the flail mower or the finish mower. It's just gonna be more passes and more time. And you know, you, you think about time in a small sense, but you can also think about it in a large sense. If it's gonna take you an extra, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 passes, if you're, depending on the area you're doing, time and time again when you're mowing, then that's gonna really add up year after year as well. And not just, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes longer this time you're out mowing and then 10, 15 minutes longer the next time. It could be hours and hours and hours, not to mention more fuel, more hours on your equipment and all that kind of thing too. I did have a gentleman ask me recently, he wanted to get a, a rough cut mower as a backup mower for his lawn as well. And he was, you know, the way he worded it was leaning towards a brush hog and I, I sent him a video that we'd done comparing the cut quality between a brush hog and a flail mower and we're standing in an area that was brush hogged today actually and then I did one pass just for comparison purposes with the flail mower right next to it and you can see how much more consistent of a cut you get with a flail mower compared to a brush hog. It's just a night and day difference. You can't really finish mow at four inches with a brush hog. That's just really not what it's designed to do, whereas you can do that with a flail mower. In fact, you can't really go over maybe three, three and a half inches with the flail mower. That's gonna be a difference. And now all that said, last year we did some finish mowing video with one of these bigger finish mowers, all right? And we had some tall grasses. What, man, those are up over there, two, three, four foot. They were, they were tall grasses, thick grasses. And we did mow through it, all right? Going very slow with the finish mower. But if you had a bunch of woody stems and a bunch of woody material, you're not gonna use a finish mower. That's not what it's designed to do. These tools are made for certain purposes and designed and engineered for different applications. And so if you go using something for a type of project that it's not designed for, you're gonna shorten the longevity of it. Maybe you're gonna break things. You're certainly gonna, well, if you do it repeatedly, have unintended consequences. I did it more or less just to show you guys visually that it could technically do it. So if you were in a pinch and you had to 
chop down a field, right? You could technically do it with this as long as it was kind of just the grassy stuff and the weeds like what we're standing in right now. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Versatility is a big one in my mind. And I think that with a more expensive tool, you should get more versatility out of it, and that's exactly what you get with a flail mower. Now I'm gonna be perfectly frank with you guys. I had never mowed my lawn with a flail mower before until today. I've talked about it. I've had a ton of viewers say that that's what they mow their lawns with, uh, especially in, in Europe too. You get a lot of, of viewers from Europe that have been using flail mowers. It seems like they're a lot more popular over there, and they're starting to gain more and more popularity over here. But I'd never done it myself. So I was incredibly pleased with the results from our our finished mowing over here with our flail mower. It had hammer blades on it. This is not a brand new unit. We've been rough cutting stuff all over the place. And this is how it performed mowing a lawn that, I mean, I wanted to keep on going. We were only gonna mow a couple of strips just to kind of show a demo. And then I just kept going and I was having a lot of fun. I might go finish it up later on. So that ain't happening, of course, with a brush hog. You will get some nice results, some really nice results. And we showed that with the finished mower too. So you're getting that versatility from the flail mower there, all right? What else you're getting with a flail mower is the ability to offset, okay? So this thing shifts out to the side. Common question, how much does it shift out to the side? Well, that depends on your tractor width. It depends on the width of the attachment. And we've got some charts uh, on the website that we can share with you as well. About two foot though on a tractor this size, you're gonna get about two foot of offset out here. So you can go closer to around a pond. You gotta be careful with that. Ditch banks, uh, fence rows, under hedges, all that kind of stuff that you can do with an offset mower like this that you can't do with a brush hog. And I realize I'm not actually talking a whole lot about the finish mower, but it's really kind of just a one trick pony, right? And there's, if you're looking to mow your lawn and you don't want a belly mower, and that's all you're looking to do, it's not that much cheaper like we talked about than a flail mower. And if you ever have another situation come up, you don't have the flexibility that you do with a flail mower. Personally, I don't, that's not what I would get, you know? So, I mean, you're more than welcome to. We sell them, right? Folks enjoy them. They, they like them. They use them if they're not going to use a flail mower. And maybe they're more um, accustomed to it. Maybe they grew up with one or maybe they used one they were growing up or whatever it is. And so that's just what they think of that they need and that they want. And that's perfectly fine. It's a good mower, but for not that much more, you can get a tool with all that versatility and more flexibility too. And so to summarize, you're getting 25% larger with a flail mower or a finished mower compared to a brush hog. So you're going to get your jobs done quicker. All right. I mean, I think that that means a lot to most of us. It's also going to be a lot more compact to the tractor than a brush hog and really even more compact than a finished mower too. And so that helps with storage space. That helps with trailering if you have to do that. Um, it also helps with maneuverability if you're in tight quarters. Now, as far as blades go, okay, standard, you know, two blade system on the brush hog. You well, this guy here has three blades. Most of these mowers have three blades on them. On the flail mower, it's a, it's a different type of cut, all right? It's on a drum that spins around in a circle like this versus horizontal, you know, like helicopter wings flying around like this. And so the type of cut is different. And so with a brush hog, you're gonna have a lot more, well, here's examples right here. I mean, a lot of longer stuff. This was cut with a brush hog earlier today. If we go over and take a look at the, at the flail mower or show you what we did last year, it's gonna be chopped a lot finer, all right? It's gonna not kind of lay on top like, like hay almost to rake up, but it's gonna be chopped a lot more consistently and finer with that vertical or that drum rotation there where the blades are just spinning around this way and chopping up everything a lot more as it goes along. As far as durability goes, it's hard to argue that a brush hog is probably the most durable. I mean, it's just kind of a simple design. You get either a shear pin on there or a slip clutch uh, for the drive line protection. Okay, and so the shear pins, <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy. I have never broke a shear pin on a, on a rotary cutter. And I have done a lot, a lot of cutting. Now, you get a slip clutch, of course, you don't have to worry about that. You do have to adjust your slip clutch from time to time. You're gonna have a stump jumper underneath, so if you hit a stump or a rock or something else, it kind of bounces up and goes over top of that. 
So there's a very durable, robust design over there. There's no doubt about it. A common concern with flail mowers is how do they handle rocks? And I don't know how many times we've shown rocks getting hit in our videos, but we've hit a lot of rocks. And again, think about the brush hog. Those blades are spinning around this way as you're going forward and they're whacking rocks and, and doing their thing. And the blades are on a, on a, on a bolt that kind of gives. And so they kind of bypass it as you go around, but it still whacks it. It's the same concept though on a flail mower. You have individual blades on there. And so they're spinning around on a rotor, but each one of those blades is also on a hinge or on a bolt. And so as it's spinning around, that blade also gives. And so it'll, it'll shatter rocks, no doubt. And once in a while you'll lose a blade, but it could be the same exact thing as with a brush hog blade. Now the flail mower is a bit unique, okay? It has actually a belt drive transmission. So you do have this gearbox here, feeds over to the side where you have belts. That's gonna be where you can get your slip or your drive line protection. You don't have shear bolts or a slip clutch on there. It's just a different setup. And so when the time comes to replace your belts, just replace two or three of them, whatever it has on there at the same time. So you start over fresh. Finish mower is the same kind of concept as a flail mower. You're not gonna have a shear bolt or a slip clutch on there. You just have belts on here, kind of like how your belly mower has them uh, underneath on your, on your John Deere lawn mower or whatever. Same concept here. So. They're all gonna have different forms of driveline protection, but they are gonna have those systems and protective measures in place, which is very important. I will say one more big pro for the brush hog though is the fact that they are quick hitch compatible. And if you're looking for a brush hog, again, it's gonna be the cheapest option by far and we're all on a budget. Did a whole video on the dirt dog and how that is really superior, in my opinion, on a more value type of, you know, not a super high end, most HD, heavy duty you know cutter that you can get but a more value cutter i mean it's got a lot of built-in features on there and just a lot of extra thought and, and attention to detail that most cutters don't have so watch that video and see why this is such a good value but these two guys over here are not going to be quick hitch compatible flail mowers they need to have a lot of room to to move that that pto shaft left to right and a, and a quick hitch just does not give it that kind of room that it needs i don't know why finished mowers aren't compatible some are, I've had some folks say they've hooked up quick hitches to these, but these top links, they're kind of they're kind of goofy on here. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, to be honest with you, with finished mowers. Not, not just ours, but finished mowers in general, but it just is what it is. All right, and finally, cut height, all right? How you use the mower, how you adjust your cut height, that kind of thing. Now with a brush hog, you are gonna have the rear trailing wheel that should be riding on the ground. You're gonna control the front end of it, up and down with your three-point hitch. Typically you want the front of the mower to be a little bit lower than the back end of the mower. You can reference your manual, it'll tell you how to set that up. On a flail mower, you have two different ways to adjust the cut height. Now, first of all, it's important to know that you're riding on the ground. There's a big rear roller on the back of this that is gonna be riding on the ground to get your consistent cut height. Three-point hitches float, all right? They don't have any down pressure that they're pushing down on the ground. So you just lower it down and it's gonna kinda go up and down and follow the contour as you drive along. Now you can't adjust that roller. You're gonna have different positions to bolt that roller into to make it higher or lower off the get-go. The other way that you can get a lot of adjustment out of your mower cut height is gonna be with your top link. And so if you extend that top link and make it longer, like you're, you're pushing it away from the tractor, it's gonna actually kind of push up the rotor, okay? And so you're gonna get a taller cut height that way. If you shrink it and pull it towards the tractor, it's gonna pull the whole mower down towards the ground and give you a shorter cut height. Now on a finished mower, Pretty easy and straightforward, maybe you can guess it, but each of these four corners is gonna have a bunch of these little shims. And so you can put shims above or below, do it equally all around, follow the manual, and then you're just gonna let the mower ride on those four casters as you're going along. And so that's gonna be how you adjust your cut height there. You know, don't have it hanging up on the three point, not riding on these wheels. You wanna have those wheels down on the ground, mowing along, doing its thing. So there you have it folks, okay? I, I hope I made my case for the two-in-one versatility of the flail mower combining the qualities of both of these into one tool. Cheaper cost for you overall, more versatility, less storage space, less trailer space, more compact. There's just so many, so many more benefits that go into it. You know, the, the offset capability to, to mow under things, to mow around ponds and ditch banks and all that other stuff. I just absolutely love flail mowers and we make them in all sorts of different sizes for small, little subcompact and compact tractors and then you get bigger and bigger and they have hydraulics on them to hydraulically side shift and hydraulically tilt all that kind of stuff but we all come to our own conclusions okay we all have a different ranking of priorities on what's most important to us and i totally understand it and that's why we offer different solutions here if i wanted to i could probably make a case to justify 
you know, a finish mower above the others and the same thing for the brush hog above the others, right? But how I feel about it is what I've told you today. I mean, I really do appreciate the flail mower. So if you're looking for a tool for your tractor, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. And we have videos using all these tools that you see here, plus many more, over 700 other videos out there. So I'd encourage you to check those out. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Oh,